final Advent session for 2022. I hope you've enjoyed each of these sessions. Advent, we've learned, is about anticipation. It's a looking forward to what is to come, the arrival of our Saviour of the world, a celebration of the birth of Jesus. And it's also a reminder for all of us that although there may be darkness still in our world, God's light has come and will come again. In this four-week series, we've taken time not just to look forward to something, the next advent of the Lord when he returns, but to celebrate the joy and the peace and the hope that we now have every single day and get to bask in every day of our lives in Christ, all freely given to us. In this final week of Advent, we celebrate our Father's magnificent, unfailing love that's been freely given to all of us, his extravagant love. The most quoted of Jesus' words, of course, are from the Gospel of John. John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 as well. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The advent of Yeshua, the advent of the Son of God, meant that there will be no more condemnation and no more judgment and no more division. And as an aside to that, if God sent Jesus into the world with no condemnation, so we are sent in the world, in, into the world in the same manner and with that same spirit. The advent of Jesus meant that when we recognise or because we recognise and accept our always giving, sacrificial love of the Father revealed through Christ, that we truly can be set free to live life to the full. It meant that salvation can come, the Greek word sozo, which means we can be healed and we can be whole again. For God so loved the world, all of it by the way. We can look at this passage simply through the lens of the cross, which of course is the greatest act of love in all of history. But we, but we see that same perfect love manifest in the birth of Christ, the Father who gave us his Son, who entered into our humanity, God revealed in flesh, the Saviour of the world, born in humble circumstances in a stable. As Paul declares so powerfully in Philippians chapter 2, the one who emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of men, the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, in his external form, in his humanity, he humbled himself still by becoming obedient even to the point of death, even to death on a cross. God so loved the world. Our Creator God, our Father, loves you. He loved you then. He loves you now. He'll always love you. His love will never, ever fail you. That's why the Apostle Paul writes in talking about unity, in talking about the diversity of gifts we've been freely given in Christ, all of that wonderful, that it only has any worth and finds any value through love, when it functions through our loving union with Christ. Then he profoundly declares in, to the Corinthian church, it's only that love that will never fail. God's kind of love, the Father's love in us, the Father's love through us will never fail. His love will never fail you. And it will never fail to bring change and transformation to the world around us. As a matter of fact, that is God's only plan. And we know that God's love will never fail us because it's, his love is based on the very essence of who he is, the very essence of his nature. So he, we can be so confident that his love will never fail us. God, written several decades before Christ are the famous words of the Roman poet Virgil. Amor, 
vincit omnia et nos sedamus amori. That's the best Latin I can do, I'm afraid. But when it's translated into English, that phrase is still famous today. Love conquers all. Love conquers all. And let us surrender to love. Love conquers all. And everyone, everywhere will ultimately, ultimately surrender to that love. How prophetic was that poem and true even today. Love never fails. Agape, God breathed love never fails in our lives. It conquers all. Ultimately, love wins. Love is actually how God wins. There is no principality, there's no power, there's no force that can ever win over love because ultimately all will surrender to love and bow their knee to the one who is love. The birth of Christ, the victorious life lived by Christ, the sacrificial cross of Christ, all of that reminds us that love truly does conquer all. And it's now through the resurrection of Christ and the Holy Spirit who has come to indwell us, to cement our union with him, that we are empowered to love others in that, with this same profound love that we have been loved with. When we... So as you anticipate Christmas in this coming week, the festivities, family coming together, maybe even a holiday break for some, I pray that that same all-conquering, unfailing love will overflow in your life and through your life. To strengthen relationships, to heal relationships, to stir deeper affection for one another, to bring people even closer together. I know that there'll be people in our lives that won't respond. It, I, I know it's not always easy, especially for those who have suffered great hurt in family or relationships. But the advent of Christ, the cross of Christ, is a reminder to me that God knows, that our God understands. It's a reminder that because of his great love for us, that he actually chose to enter into our hurt, into our brokenness, to bring healing and reconciliation. He took a huge step toward us, fully knowing the consequences. And he became a recipient of abuse. He became a recipient of pain from the very ones who he came to love. Yet still, in the midst of that, he reveals the face of the Father's love to those same people. At the most painful possible moment in his life, he loves, declares, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Father, I know they are clueless in their actions in this moment. And, that, and the power of that same love can do that in us and in others, in our family, in our friends' lives, through us as we become like our Father, as we become forgiving, reconciling love. We can bring people into an encounter with our loving God and, bring, and release forgiveness and healing and life and salvation into their lives. So as we conclude this special Advent series, can we declare this as a prayer together? Father, I long to know more of your extravagant personal love for me. I thank you that you don't just love humanity, you love me personally. And even with all of my weaknesses and failings, remind me again and again throughout this Christmas season to pause and to wait on you to open my heart to receive the love you have for me through your son to marvel at your unfailing love let your love conquer my heart teach me your way of love toward all those around me my heart's desire is to see your kingdom grow and to see your love conquer all come do more than I could ever ask or imagine because of the power of your Holy Spirit that dwells in me. Amen. Amen to that. From our family to yours, have a blessed Christmas filled to overflowing with hope and peace and joy and the extravagant love of Christ. And may 2023, we pray that 2023 will see the goodness of God break into your life and break out through your life beyond your wildest imagination. 
Amen. We love you. We wish you a very Merry Christmas. Name is Jesus. His name is